You know, when we're talking about uh, ETFs, we have just the person. We have our man, Mr. Dave Mazza, the head managing director and head of products at Direction Shares. Dave Mazza, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, man. So, so good to have you come on. You know, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, good Thanksgiving. It was really good. Yeah, nice to be back with my family. Actually, up in Massachusetts, where I grew up. I love it. And now you're back in New York now, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, hey, I want to switch gears on you just for a second, right? You know, because sure. I get a lot of calls in here sometimes about ETFs all the time. Sometimes ETNs. Okay. Yeah. And what I'd like to know, right? Like when you're, when if you can give the folks an education about when you're making um, ETF, right? Like. What regulation are you under and how does that work? And how does that differentiate between a note? Yeah, no, they uh, in many ways, they can look and feel exactly the same, an ETF versus an ETN. But uh, as, you, as you know, and as many of your uh, listeners know, that they can be very different. Exchange-traded fund, most of them exist under what's known as the 1940 Act, which is the same uh, SEC Act that mutual funds exist under. Now, okay. uh, until recently, ETFs were sort of a side pocket of the industry, but they've, the SEC has recently passed something called the ETF rule, which modernizes the rules around ETFs, which is great for the industry, because um, it's uh, proof that ETFs are now an important part of the financial ecosystem. Yes. But notes are different. Um, Again, they might look and feel the same. They might give you access to different areas of the market, but really, they're an obligation of the issuing bank. Um, so while they may be marketed uh, like a financial product, and that's what they are, you um, do have the credit risk associated with the issuing bank, uh, uh, should that bank run into trouble or fail in some way, shape, or form. Um, so while they're guaranteeing you effectively the same thing on a daily basis, uh, notes can be quite different, and they exist under different rules. That's, um, yeah. That's so there's something cool. to bear in mind. No, it is. You know why? Because now this has, it like, about three years ago, Dave, right? We were getting a yeah. lot of calls because what had happened is that the notes, now, do all notes have an end date, too? Because that's what was going on. Like, there were end dates, and people were in the notes, and that, like, that was the end date. That, that was going to be over that day, and that's it. Yeah, that's right. So they're really they're unsecured debt uh, of the issuing bank, and they, and they do have time periods associated with them. So what often happens is um, the bank will issue a new ETN uh, that's effectively uh, the same exact exposure, but in some cases they don't. Um, so if investors are trading ETNs, and if you do own them for uh, longer time periods and you're not just trading them on an uh, intraday or daily basis, you got to understand uh, who's the issuing bank, uh, what, its terms, what its structure is, uh, and some of the bells and whistles behind it, so you don't potentially run into any trouble, uh, like we saw a few years ago. Yeah, because that oil one—that's that's that's. that's and that's folks, right. this is really important to understand versus the ETF versus the ETN. Okay, because there's pl you have plenty of choices these days. It's not like they they can't find an ETF, right? Yeah, for, exactly. Yeah, there's, there's there's plenty of choices. Now, hey, we're, we're in December again. I don't know if you saw it or not, but. I, we were clo the only day we close when the market's open is Friday, so everyone can have off, so they can you know have a long weekend. Yeah. Um, but on Wednesday, Dave, right? Uh, oh, here, can can you stay right through the break? Is that cool? Yeah, we'll stay with you. Okay, awesome. Stay right there, folks. Uh, Dave and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials down two thirty seven, Nasdaq's off ninety three, S and P's off twenty seven. We're going to be talking gold, folks. I want to know, you know, a trader did. Uh, $1.75 million bet that gold's going to be $4,000 in 18 months. Now, I think he's dreaming, but we'll, I, we want to ask Dave about it. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 238. Nasdaq's off 94. S&P's off 27. Our uh, guest is Dave Mazza. Dave, folks, is the, the managing director, head of product at Direction Shares. I couldn't let him go because he's been on so many trading desks. I had to ask you this question, man. I mean, I to me, hey, listen, uh, you know, you get an option trade, 18 months out. Yeah. They put 1.75 million down, 4,000, you know, for a 4,000 strike price. What happens, like, and I'm just curious, you know, personally, at trading desk, like, I mean, you're the, you're the head of product. You've been a lot of different desks like that. What happens yeah. when you see something come across like that, Dave? Well, certainly it's going to get everyone's attention. Uh, but when he, if you see actually someone put the trade up, you know, uh, you're wondering first, is it a fat finger? Um, yes. But it doesn't, it doesn't appear to be the case. You know, 
gold's been in this interesting uh, range, and it's a it's kind of a bit of a rock and a hard place. Where on one hand, you know, there's concerns about potentially hyperinflation because the deficit, global debt, uh, just continues to increase uh, in uh, in the U.S. and of course around the globe. But then on the other hand, we have all these deflationary pressures. Yes, uh, but. Uh, one of those is ultimately going to win out. And right. so when you see a big trade like that, especially not in the next month, but 18 months out, it tells you that there's actually some momentum around the potential for some fear to come back into the marketplace. You know, this year has been amazing. I think, though, you know, in the equity markets, other than energy, it's been hard to find a, a place where there's been difficult to have excellent total returns in double digits. Yes. Um, but Peel back the onion on the economic data, look at manufacturing today, look at some other things. It's not a great picture out there. So um, seeing these, seeing gold potentially have the potential to rally, um, at least what the options move is saying, uh, uh, I think there's something to it. Yeah. No, listen, I, I saw that come across. I'm saying to myself, you know, that's a beautiful thing. It's, well, sometimes what happens, folks, is that you, you can say, I don't know if that's a beautiful thing because if it happens too quick you're like what's going to happen to the rest of the economy right and it's like but I, there's no doubt every time that you think inflation's coming in you know you see these interest rates in europe stay low i mean the bond market today shook it off again it's pretty amazing yeah well listen you know, exactly interesting thing about today you know, the bond market shook it off uh, even though equities are taking it on the chin yes no doubt well listen we always love the education dave really appreciate it and i look forward to having you for two weeks from today okay Sounds good. Look forward to being back. Stay warm. I will. <laughs> okay, man. That's our man, Mr. Dave Mazza. Dave, folks, is the director, uh, managing director at Direction Shares. He's the head of product. So bottom line, when you see all these great products coming out, uh, this is someone that has to put them together, number one, figure out what we want, number two, and then basically, you know, keep them together, which uh, they do a great job at.